What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 17 of the In Control Gaming Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Olay, and joining me as usual, my fellow co-host, PK. Always here, buddy. How's it going, man? Uh, not bad, not bad. Just enjoying this, uh, the E3 calm down. Yeah, the E3 calm. E3 was crazy. Mm. A lot of videos that you guys should go watch if you haven't. Reactions to all the press conferences that we, yeah. we had as a whole In Control team. Was it was a, a lot of fun, yeah. Marathon. Yeah, it was a proper marathon. <laughs> well into the night. <laughs> Um, but this is the In Control Gaming Podcast, your one-stop shop for all the latest gaming news, opinion, what's happening in the industry, coming from two chuckleheads like us. Uh, quick two notes of housekeeping. Uh, keep an eye out for our Comic-Con podcast video, which we recorded live. That was a lot of fun. Got to interact with a couple of you guys who do watch the podcast and meet a lot of new people. So we're going to have that whole episode uploaded. Definitely check that out. And a gameplay video for Yakuza Kiwami 2's demo, uh, which I'm super excited about. You know, I'm the Yakuza fiend in this place. Um, so Still we're gonna, to it. Yeah, we're going to have a gameplay video of that demo out too. Um, and that's going to wrap it up for housekeeping. Let's dive straight into the news, which will focus initially on upcoming game releases or releases that have just happened, which I think you guys might be interested in. To begin with, we've got Vampire, which is an RPG from Don't Nod. Um, that just came out two weeks ago, middle of June. Um, really, really well-reviewed game. I feel like you should be saying it. Vampire. Vamp- vampire? Vampire, yeah. 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 Because it's spelled with a Y, so <laughs> we should be saying Vampire. Um, so that's a really cool RPG. Uh, awesome mechanics with uh, feeding on civilians and um, kind of trying to develop deeper bonds through, through that feeding on their blood. Is opening it RPG-esque, sideways. kind of? Yeah. In terms of development and, uh, well, character development. Yeah, it, it's super RPG. Like, from I haven't played it, but from, like, everything that I've seen, it's it's pretty much, like, decision-making all the way through. Conversations, who you choose to feed on, like I was talking about. Yeah. Combat seems Arkham-style. Yeah. Um, but it does look like a really cool game. They made Life is Strange, so uh, maybe if you enjoy that game, give this a try, even though it's completely different. <laughs> uh, we have Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, which is out on Nintendo Switch. I played the demo for that. A lot of fun. Toad is the cutest. Um, we also have Octopath Traveler for Switch coming out on Friday 13th, Switch July. Switch has got a flood of games yeah. now. A lot of stuff has been coming out. Um, Octopath Traveler, I did play the demo for that as well. It's an uh, old school kind of GRPG style game, which has a focus. It has eight different characters. You choose to be one, follow their story, and then you interact with those seven other characters on the world map, and uh, you get to experience their stories as well. Uh, even if you weren't, if, even if you didn't choose that character initially to be, um, I chose to be Primrose, who is the. Uh, <laughs> she's a stripper, uh, basically. <laughs> <laughs> she's like. A, I had she, a feeling <laughs> it, it would be a female it would be, yeah, 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 yeah. And her story is actually pretty interesting uh, initially, from like the first three hours I played. So um, definitely, if you have a Switch, I think it's it got, the reviews came out today. It's doing pretty well. Um, we have Monster Hunter World coming out for a uh, PC specifically PC. Mm. on August 8th. So if you didn't have a console and you've been interested in that game, August 8th is a when you can pick A lot of PC gamers up. must be really hyped about that. Yeah, I'm sure they are. Yeah, lots of people must want to play that because of the Hunter, mods as well. Yeah, Monster Hunter has always had that little, um, that following from back in the day. Yeah, I'm guessing the mods would be crazy for this. The first yeah. thing you're going to see is Iron Man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and a metallic T-Rex. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, good shout, good shout. Um, as well as Yakuza 0 and Kiwami, finally the Yakuza series coming to PC. That's going to be out on Steam on August the 1st. Guys, uh, if you've never played the Yakuza games, I give this my biggest recommendation. Really cool, epic series. Watch videos online of it, but definitely take a look at picking that up if you're a PC only player uh, and finally Fortnite season 5 begins on Friday 13th July the uh, servers were down today for maintenance and yep. everything yeah yep. so we should be up and running tomorrow okay so we're gonna have two new locations added to the map I saw the launch video earlier today the map has changed quite a bit because I love the way Fortnite have been handling their it's like, got a western building feel to it yeah this time okay yeah, slightly western kind of mm. a lot of like desert areas and yeah. stuff that have been added and as well uh we were talking about this earlier they've added a four-player cart uh, so you I, we have we finally have vehicles in fortnite mm. which is mm. awesome um and of course new balances and patches and i think they've lowered shotguns again for the millionth time so um yeah definitely and uh you thinking of picking up that battle pass 
season yeah, five? Yeah, I think uh, season five, I think I'll finally jump onto it. Yeah. yeah. And we should have Fortnite videos up. Like, seriously, we got to jump in on the Real soon. <laughs> We're slacking. We're slacking. Um, but that's going to wrap it up for the new and upcoming game releases. Okay, so moving on to our first of two news items. Um, we have some interesting internet uh, drama and uh, kerfuffle that has come up, basically to, go, to do with a game developer who writes stories for an MMORPG called Guild Wars 2. Her name is Jessica Price. Jessica. Uh, she, the company that makes Guild Wars 2 is called ArenaNet. Now, uh, Jessica Price was having a Reddit Ask Me Anything about writing uh, stories for MMORPGs uh, and she carried on this conversation after the e uh, AMA ended uh, onto her personal Twitter where she continued talking about this whole discussion uh, and a prominent community uh, member of Guild Wars 2 called uh, Derowar Gaming basically it's always uh, a tough one it's always <laughs> yeah, these guys have crazy names yeah. uh, just be funky underscore Ole or Pato <laughs> uh, he basically replied to one of her tweets saying he slightly disagreed with her and made his point about why he disagreed very polite very respectful not uh, aggressive in any way and she replied by completely lashing out at him uh, being very antagonistic, very rude, very unprofessional, and quite aggressive, um, and talking about how, because she's a female game developer, she's having things mansplained to her. So after attacking this uh, community member of Guild Wars 2, uh, the CEO got involved because she just randomly lashed out at this guy, and uh, she eventually lost her job because of the way she acted, and he laid it out all in a post that was given to Polygon or Kotaku, I think. Yep. And um, one of her co-workers tried to defend her. Uh, I'm not sure exactly the extent of what he did, because we don't know what happened behind yeah, the scenes, but he also got wrapped up in this and also ended up getting fired. Now, this has whole, obviously resulted in a lot of drama because game developers are out there saying toxic behavior has driven her to get fired, whereas you have people on the other side, mostly the people who play games, who are just like, no, she acted very unprofessionally and just lashing out at this paying customer and a prominent community member, which generally even shouldn't mean anything. But they're like, she acted unprofessionally and she got sacked and that's what would have happened in a lot of other jobs with a public profile. Yeah, of course. Um, this whole situation now is really blowing up in the last couple of days. I don't know what you think about this entire situation um, considering everything that's happening. Well, first things first is that um, when you're in a position where you are on Twitter and everybody knows the position that you hold. And if you know that what you say can impact you or your career development or your company, then look, whether you're a male or female, you always have to be careful with your words. Just behave yourself. Mm -hmm. You see what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I mean, whether she got fired and someone else who may have done that in the past or who does that in the future gets fired, we're not there in the background. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is that you shouldn't have just outright lashed out at someone. Yeah, it, it doesn't it, make, make I mean, any sense. well, in the, in the age that we live in now, it's a little bit difficult because you have all these factions and whether this person acted unfairly to a woman or whether they just acted unfairly oh, yeah, to yeah. like certain people. You see what I mean? She it, does it, obviously experience a lot of trolling exactly, from guys exactly. who obviously just say crap to her and on Twitter been there, and abuse yeah. her. Yeah, it's always yeah, been there. It's always been there. Um, so maybe it was her reaction to that, like she deals with a lot of crap. Someone says something mm. very reasonable and you take it out really on them. See, yeah. But I'm like, you could still like with time once you cool down you can apologize and yeah. say but i'm guessing she's been doubling down on this she's been giving a lot of interviews she's been talking about how she's uh being targeted because she's a woman and i'm thinking to myself no it's because you acted really badly poorly unprofessionally and you're doubling down on it to this to this one person of course she experiences a lot of terrible things online but that just because you experience terrible things online doesn't give you license to lash out at yeah, everyone right. you know so that that to me is where I, the line in the sand is drawn should she have been fired i don't know i'm not the we're ceo not, we're not the ones to say exactly but generally you're not supposed to and we out. don't know what happened behind the scenes they may have been the conversation saying look let's calm down what can we do to make this right? You know, can you apologize? Can we move past this? She might have said, no, I'm not apologizing because obviously uh, she's also getting a lot of backup from other game devs, yeah. which is understandable, you know, but it's not like 
this whole situation with respect to Derwar gaming, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just crazy because in any other job, you would be sacked for applying like that to a customer in public. Yeah. It's crazy. You would be sacked, yeah, you know, exactly. in any other industry. So that's kind of where I fall on this. And I'm guessing me and you are kind of on... We're kind of on the same page because yeah. the way I see it is that if you are going to respond super negative, like in a negative manner to someone who's asking you a question... Whether or not that person was rude to you before and they're rude to you now, does that give you the space to just lash out, especially in the position that you're in? Mm -hmm. Especially for it to build up distraction. For us to be talking about it, that means that you are in a position that would make it a talking point. Mm -hmm. If you want to avoid it, just... Avoid it, you know? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, Avoid it. Exactly. And we're not trying to... uh, uh, Expl- say to anybody out there who is in that position, like this oh, yeah, is exactly course, how you course. should be but, yeah, on Twitter but, but and deal things, with harassment. Yeah, but, yeah, but the, these yeah, things, we're these not trying to, come yeah. to. These things always come to like how you personally respond to stuff. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and was I'm, the response live or on Twitter? It was on Twitter. That makes it worse. Yeah, it was on Twitter. It was live. You don't have the time to think through or whatever could be the exact. case at the moment. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. In, and especially in an industry, in a you can breathe. Company, you have the time for people to say, "Well, yeah. you know, well, slow down or whatever." Look at your position, and whether you're a male or a female, we won't even dive into that because I'll never catch that bait. I will never catch it. Fact of the matter is, is that you had time to breathe, look, and whether you would respond in a completely neutral. You could have responded sarcastically and just blown him off. Or you could have just completely ignored it. You can, I want to say block, but the what the guy said, is he's so calm yeah. and respectful. And he had been talking on a live stream the day before about how much he loves Jessica Price's work. Yeah, He was saying that on a live stream, that he loves her work so much. So obviously he has a vast amount of respect for her. It's evident in the tweet if you look at it for yourself. Yeah. So it's like, come on, I, I don't think that's the way to... It's unprofessional, in yeah. my opinion. That's how I We're not the it. ones to say whether she deserved to lose the job or yeah. not, but don't reply mm-hmm. in a manner that's just unnecessarily negative. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much, I guess, all we're going to say yeah. on that. And then our final news story is to do with Player Unknown Battlegrounds and mm-hmm. how they have just dropped their lawsuit against Epic Games suing them for copyright infringement on bat- making a battle royale mode in their own game. And the replicating lo- the experience. Replicating the experience. It yes, I'm yes, yes. So uh, PUBG, Bluehole Corp, who owns PUBG, had sued Epic Games in January in South Korean court because that's where uh, Blue Hole is based uh, against uh, Epic Games. And just this past week, they have decided to completely drop the lawsuit. No explanation given. It's just been dropped. Yeah. And all I had in my notes to this was LOL, because mm-hmm. it was absurd that they thought they could copyright a mode in yeah. a game. You yeah. Know? Like I said before, I understand the mistake. But in the long run, it was not gonna. it was not going to stick saying that um, releasing a battle royale game, hundred like a hundred people in a game arena, was going to stick in the sense that they copied us. Yes, especially in an industry like gaming. It's like yeah, it's like when Doom came first came out, like in the early nineties, and then Wolfenstein was it? Which was first? Was it Doom or Wolfenstein three D? Mm. I think it was. Uh, Wolf. It might have been Wolfenstein. Wolf. Was Wolf first? Yeah, Wolfenstein. And then Doom, obviously, that was the first. First, first first person shooter and Doom basically copied that and, yeah. and made it different and better but that's the thing you can copy an idea for the game but you have to add your own spin on it exactly. you can't outright plagiarize that's how things work and that's not copyright so Blue Hole shame on you and I'm glad you came to your senses and realized this lawsuit made absolutely no f- sense <laughs> oh yeah i should do the fortnite like <laughs> emote <laughs> the l yeah 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 they deserve yeah. that um but yeah so that's gonna wrap it up uh app up that's gonna wrap it up for this section up, of up 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 up, up yeah. of the news mm-hmm. uh definitely thanks for tuning in and join us in our next section as we discuss topic of the week which as you can guess is gonna be e3 related join us for that guys thanks for tuning in <laughs>